Oh, hi all. Um, it's Lewis Lexo from LA Partners. I um, thought I'd put this um, video out there to share with, um, with builders and trade licenses that, um, that um, are affected by QBCC um, licensing um, regulations. Um, I know you guys don't really enjoy the compliance side of, a, of, a, of business. Um, it's one of those things that has to be done. But I thought I'd just quick, quick share a quick uh, video um, that sort of just gives you a bit of some key points to, to look out for given the, the changes made by QBCC that comes in effect this 2019 financially, financial year, the calendar year. Um, so look, just some um, key points. Um, critical issues to note. Uh, as I said, these changes came into effect on the 1st of January 2019. Um, the first time that the annual reporting requirements that are back on board, given the changes, um, every builder or, and um, trade business um, that's governed by QBCC must lodge their first um, annual reports by the 31st of December 2019. So just be aware of that. Um, the accounts, the information must be submitted um, through the QBCC um, online portal. Um, so if you haven't registered on the, Q on the QBCC online portal, you'll need to register yourselves. Um, just a warning, um, just making sure what you do submit to the QBCC as part of this annual reporting requirements, financial reporting requirements, just make sure the information is actually correct and complete because it can be, have um, fundamental consequences. And I think um, as we've all seen, over the last, especially over the last 12 months, there's been a lot of um, um, licenses, um, builders and trade businesses licenses that have been suspended or, uh, or sometimes canceled by the QBCC. Um, and I'm sure there's a percentage in there, I haven't got the stats, I'm sure there's a percentage in there that's been due to maybe not um, having some of those critical things addressed in when they're reporting their financial requirements, um, which we'll go into shortly. So just to keep it quick, um, just the next space key points, um, just make some notes on here, just making sure I don't miss anything uh, to make you aware of. Um, as I said, uh, every, every lot QBCC licensee, builder and trade businesses must have their financial information by the 31st of December. Um, it's not mandatory for the financial information, the annual financial uh, reporting to be prepared by a qualified accountant. It's not mandatory. However, um, given the, the, some of the, the complexity of some of those um, definitions and and information that has to go into the into the financial reporting um, I would highly recommend that you actually get your accountant to at least have a have a look at it have a review of it to making sure everything's all in order before you submit um, the annual reporting financial information to the QBCC um, the the MFR the minimum financial reporting report that the account prepares that's still valid that certainly applies when you're applying for a new license or you're trying to upgrade your mass maximum revenue allowed to a higher level. So just be aware of that. The MFR report is still in place, but only when adjustments on your license are required. Moving on to the next, um, next area. Um, that net tangible asset position for every license is critical because that allows you to obviously do the, turn, do the turnover that you're allowed, the maximum revenue turnover that you're allowed to do subject to your net tangible asset position. Um, so, and, and making sure you are actually compliant with QBCC regulations with the financial requirements. So, the net tangible assets is the, is the critical um, position of your business that obviously governs um, your license on the QBCC. So um, five key points to note on that. Um, that sometimes people go wrong 
and try to do everything themselves and not to get, get guidance from their accountant. Uh, five key points to the note. Uh, make sure all transactions are entered into your accounting system. So make sure it's complete. Um, second point, uh, making sure your accounting system is reconciled to making sure what's in there is all valid. Um, and, 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 and basically it, it um, gives you the ability to say that everything's complete and recorded. Um, make sure your work in progress is recorded um, at that um, reporting period. Um, that's pretty important because obviously that's an impact on your asset position. Um, also make sure your retentions are included in there, in your accounts, because sometimes people forget about to actually record days in the accounts. They might keep a separate side note as to what retentions on a spreadsheet, whatever you, you, however you record it, but also make sure it's reflected in your financial statements um, in your accounting system. So retentions sometimes can add to quite a substantial amount. Then, um, so make sure those are included. Um, related party loans, um, directors loans, make sure they're all correct in there. Um, so have a squeeze at that, making sure all is in order. Um, so just, just, those, just those key points there tonight, because um, I am concerned given the, the changes, people are basically not going to be kept, kept up to date what's going on with the changes by the QVCC with the annual financial requirements. So um, I'll put this video up on our platforms. Um, there'll be some links in there for further guidance if you want to have a look at. Um, but yeah, make sure that you're always complying with the QBCC. Hope you enjoyed this podcast on the QBCC changes. Hope you got value from it. Um, making sure that uh, you always stay compliant with QBCC and continue to grow your business. And always stay compliant and making sure that you enjoy your journey, particularly enjoying the, the fruits that your business bears with your family.